Good afternoon. It's Wednesday, the 21st of January 2015, just after one o'clock. Welcome to UK Column News. I'm your host this afternoon, Brian Gerrish. With me in the studio behind the technical desk is uh, Nick Green. Well, the weather, the weather does not matter in today's news because events in Britain are unfolding very, very quickly. And today we think we're going to bring you one of the most important news um, that the UK column has ever done as we start to get a glimpse into the heart of the beast which is driving uh, politics in Britain. And we'll start straight away with a news flash that uh, the Aberdeen court where Robert Green is attending this morning has been turned into a star chamber. Uh, we had a report uh, coming in a few minutes ago to say that uh, the judge has ejected the public uh, from the court. This is Aberdeen Sheriff Court where campaigner against child abuse uh, Robert Green is attending this morning. The public have been ejected from the court. Uh, they've been told that if there is any filming of persons entering or leaving the court, uh, those uh, filming will be arrested. And uh, Robert's trial has now been moved into what is believed to be the smallest um, chamber uh, within Aberdeen Sheriff's Court. So a star chamber for a man whose only crime is to have campaigned repeatedly over many years uh, for a full and proper investigation into the abuse of child abuse victim Holly Gregg and of course other youngsters in Scotland. So let's remind ourselves of uh, the powerful politicians who are now controlling how justice is administered, not to bring paedophiles to book, but to deal with those who are considered dangerous by the state, those who campaign to bring paedophiles uh, into court and uh, for justice to be done. And here we are, Home Secretary Theresa May, who has still not achieved an independent inquiry uh, in the United Kingdom into child abuse, saying on the Andrew Marr show that really she couldn't understand how the authorities that should be protecting children um, are failing to do so. So this is the situation in UK after months and months, and more and more evidence coming to the fore, uh, still no child abuse inquiry, uh, but our Home Secretary, Theresa May, appears totally puzzled. And of course, we must warn our viewers and listeners that anybody now daring uh, to challenge the British government on any matter, whether it's fraud, corruption, uh, fiddling of expenses, or indeed child abuse, runs the risk of being classified as terrorists uh, by our very own security services and GCHQ. No, this is not a joke. Read the national press and media for yourselves. So Robert Green, here he is, if we uh, just bring it up so that we can see the man, and uh, Holly Gregg, the girl that Robert has campaigned uh, over many years uh, for justice for Holly Gregg. Uh, let's remind ourselves, Robert has spent um, two periods in prison and he's been held effectively under house arrest at his home in Warrington, having to repeat, report to the police uh, for a, a daily for a total of 295 days. If you're watching or listening this broadcast from overseas and you've been under the impression that uh, Britain is the seat of honesty, morality, democracy, and of course justice, then I'm afraid you're sadly mistaken because the model that's being exposed to the British public is the exact opposite. We are seeing fraud, corruption, paedophilia, lies, and now a massive cover-up at the heart of the British government as the truth comes to the surface. Well, if it's bad for Robert Green in a star chamber in Scotland, uh, our other news flash today is that uh, very brave child abuse uh, victim and whistleblower Melanie Shaw is back in police custody. And uh, we have been broadcasting that Melanie has been reporting harassment by Nottingham Police and the authorities over the last few weeks. Um, but we had a phone call again just before going live to say that uh, Melanie had been uh, uh, picked up by the police, arrested by the police, and she is presently sitting in a custody suite um, within the Nottingham Police um, 
within Nottingham Police. So we will give you more information on that when we have it available. Um, but of course, what we have shown are these pictures, which is damage to uh, the door of Melanie's home. This is the back door uh, where literally the police rammed their way in, forcing entry, breaking the door, breaking the lock. And uh, that was a terrifying experience for Melanie Shaw. What is Melanie's crime? Well, of course, she has become a whistleblower to paedophilia within Britain's children's homes, uh, not involving one or two children, but involving hundreds of children. Before we move back onto the subject of child abuse and some uh, extraordinary reports that have come into the mainstream press today, let's just have a look at a, a couple of other issues. Uh, remember that what has been happening in Syria has been driven by Britain's uh, government, which has now been exposed as a criminal government. And the Mail Online said here, smiling for the social media, Syria's first lady seen in public uh, for the first time in months as her husband's forces wipe out at least 39 people in airstrikes. And if you look at the white inset box we've ringed, it's believed at least half of those killed in the airstrikes were civilians. But if we read the text of the article, which is on the left-hand side of your screen, uh, it says this, Syria's first lady is seen in public for the first time in months as airstrikes by her husband forces kill at least 30 people, more than half of them civilians. So the headline says believed, there's uncertainty, this is not factual information, but when you get into the text, um, what you are told is that it is fact. If you research the article yourself, you'll see that a lot of information comes from the so-called uh, Syrian Observatory, uh, which is simply an organisation working from a terrorist house in Britain. We say Daily Mail propaganda, which is trying to bring um, attention back onto Syria from a point of view that Assad, of course, is the man who is the terrorist. Well, meanwhile, what does the British government do? The British government does everything possible uh, to cover up uh, its involvement, not only in Syria, but of course the Iraq war. And the news today is that Chilcot inquiry is going to be delayed until after the election. And it takes Nick Robinson, BBC political editor, uh, to give us the information. Uh, and he says that uh, basically he expected Sir John to set out the reasons why the report could not be completed in time. Um, that was also repeated by The Guardian. So here is a report that the inquiry, which began its work in 2009 and held its last public hearing in 2011, uh, has still not produced a report on weapons of mass destruction, lies, and of course, what actually took place in Iraq. So we are going to say UK column opinion, lies, obfuscation and whitewash to cover up war crimes. And this man, of course, central Tony Blair, uh, absolutely centered to the storm over the lies of weapons of mass destruction. And uh, what's been happening? Well, Conservative MP Bernard Jenkins said Cabinet Secretary Sir Jeremy Hayward will be questioned about the inquiry when he ab appears before MPs on the Public Administration Select Committee next week. No hurry there. Uh, I think we all thought this was coming, Mr Jenkins said. It's just... There's a, sorry, it just had that smell about it, didn't it? I think we deserve an explanation. Well, that seems a pretty relevant comment, but of course it goes on to say that while a serious matter, Mr Jenkins said he did not believe the delay was an election issue. Here is the arrogance, the British public too stupid to understand what's going on. They don't need to be told it can be delayed until after the election. And of course, remember that uh, UK Column is predicting that what we are going to see is a super coalition where, of course, it will be irrelevant whatever that inquiry says, as all three parties will be in partnership and will be required to cover each other's backs. If I just add a little bit more to that screenshot, Nick, please. Um, so what else can we say? Well, um, we've got... Uh, 
basically the, the comment here, which we've labeled, and pigs may fly. Sir Jeremy, who has the final say over the declassification of documents relating to the war, said last year, uh, said last year that the final report would tell the whole story about the UK's involvement. Pigs may fly. Um, okay, where do we go from here? If we come back on shot, um, Nick, if uh, we may, we're just going to uh, just move on slightly uh, with the next slide. Bear with me. Uh, here we are, the man himself, Tony Blair, mastermind of the Iraq war, and of course the lie that was told repeatedly to the British people uh, was about weapons of mass destruction. So let's remind ourselves what we are talking about. We're not talking about collateral damage. We're not talking about statistics. We're dealing with the death and mutilation of human beings, uh, civilians and military alike, on the back of lies told by the British government. And of course, we've pointed out before that uh, uh, what we're really looking at is a death cult uh, driving itself from Britain. Look at the body count in Iraq alone, up to 654,000 from a Lancet survey and uh, opinion research business survey is talking about over a million deaths as a result of the conflict started, of course, on the lies of uh, weapons of mass destruction. We covered this yesterday. Um, David, our King Cameron, uh, pressing for further attacks on free speech and liberty. Uh, this is the Prime Minister who is now desperate to use the full power of GCHQ and Britain's security services uh, to stop anybody daring to speak out and raise an opinion about the misdemeanours of the British government or the establishment and judicial system which has been supporting it. And I'd just like to remind people of how we analysed things yesterday, which was the, the Labour and Conservative Lib Dem governments unleashing the wars, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria. Uh, they create the terror threat. Uh, this gives GCHQ more power. Uh, GCHQ strangely being trained by the political charity Common Purpose. Uh, the Snowden documents uh, then allow the press to ramp up the horror of state snooping. But if we follow this through, where does it take us? Well, it gives the state spying apparatus both uh, more power and greater control over the press and media. And UK Column's political opinion is that, of course, this is what David Cameron and the Lib Lab Con wanted in the first place. We also covered this, and uh, this was to show how the network was set up around the Leveson inquiry. Uh, we won't dwell on it too long, but let's remember this is where the real power is, is uh, to be found. It's not in Parliament, but it is in the Privy Council operating secret meetings uh, to which the uh, British public are never privy. Could it get any worse or could it get better? Well, we leave that up to our viewers and listeners to decide today. Um, but this is what has been emerging over the last uh, 24 hours. We've taken the lead from Sky News. And uh, what they're talking about, including producing a video, is the discovery of um, a National Archive document, uh, which is uh, a security created document with allegations against former public officials of unnatural sexual proclivities. And uh, it's being said very strongly, uh, just how is it that these documents uh, have been submerged into the National Archives? Well, if we look at the report in more detail, uh, here we are. Uh, I've joined two of the screenshots together so that we can see the full title, security allegations against former public of unnatural sexual pro proclivities. Now we've circled that with a question mark uh, because what does that actually mean? What does former public mean? Of course, the key words are left out. Officials, are they talking about the general public? Are they talking about politicians? 
So something very, very strange here, but a spokesperson for the department, that's the cabinet office, said in this case, the file was kept closed and retained as it contained information from the security services and advice from law officers. So we, here we have the security services uh, warning government of unnatural activities, which of course could lead to blackmail and control by foreign powers. What does the government do? It hides that information. And of course, here we see the circular system where the government says, well, we've taken legal advice and we've decided to bury these documents. What the government didn't do, of course, was bring in the police and special branch for a full investigation. But it gets better. And uh, here he is, Sir Bernard Ing uh, Ingham. Um, Thatcher's former press secretary, he told Sky News he could not really recall the file. He did, though, confirm that both he and Mrs Thatcher were aware of allegations against a government minister in the early 1980s. But, of course, the security file there is not talking about one individual. It's talking about individuals. Well, we don't have to look far because here's the independent. We've shown this before. Warning, Thatcher was warned of Tory child sex party claims. And uh, her personal bodyguard, Barry Stevens, has told how, of how he warned the Prime Minister of allegations that one of her top aides was involved in sex parties with underage boys. Mr Stevens, a former detective chief inspector, told The Sun on Sunday that he passed on allegations about her loyal confidant Peter Morrison before he was promoted to the position of deputy chairman of the Conservative Party in the 1980s. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. Apparently nobody knew. Well, uh, how many of the general public, we wonder, have seen this video freely available on YouTube uh, where we can see and listen to former Conservative whip Tim Fortescue a man in post-1970-73, uh, saying this. It might be a scandal involving small boys. Could be anything. They, the members of parliament, would come to the whips and ask if we might help. So here we have a former conservative whip revealing on video that um, members of parliament were involved in the abuse of small boys and yet when they came to the whips did the whips inform the police no their job was to help cover it up so in the national archives it now emerges that security reports have been buried in order to protect the government but of course it was the uk column that uh, led on the fact that it wasn't just the abusers that were buried in the National Archives, it was also the trail of abuse. So let's have a look at uh, this for, uh, previous exposure by the UK column, where we identified that in the National Archives, the records for every children's home and organisation in the country uh, have been closed. 75 years we'll start off. Um, so we've got the records for Rose Cottage Children's Home in Highbury Road. It's closed for 75 years. Why would the British government want to close the records of a children's home? Well, it's not the only one. Let's have a look at a few more because on they roll. And the time scale, 80 years, 75 years, 50 years, record after record where the British government has deliberately buried the records on children's homes because, of course, within those records is the record of the abuse of those children. And uh, let's bring it right up to date and uh, let's bring it back on Melanie Shaw, that very brave lady who's now incarcerated in Nottinghamshire police cells. Uh, she was a child at Beechwood Home where she describes her abuse, the abuse of other young children. And this has supposedly now led to Operation Daybreak investigation by Nottingham Police. And uh, what has happened? Precisely nothing. Here is the record for Beechwood Home, Children's Home, Residential Nursery and Reception, uh, closed for 75 years. 
And it's taken very brave people, uh, campaigners like Bill Maloney, like Robert Greene, many, many others. And we'll also add the UK Columns work uh, to show that, of course, the reason these records had to be abused is because the government claims that at the moment there are no statistics on the number of children that have been abused in Britain's appalling care system for children. Um, Elm Guest House, we've talked about, sits in the background. The police claim to be investigating no progress, even though evidence coming to the fore of children murdered and uh, no apologies for bringing this lady back in again. Uh, she simply can't understand uh, why there's been no progress. She's in charge, but she simply can't understand why there's been no progress. So the result is in Britain today, very brave people like Robert Green uh, in a star chamber as we speak and abuse victim Melanie Shaw back in custody after, after harassment by Nottinghamshire police and authorities. If this is happening around children, can we really trust the government to do anything for us, run our schools, run our railways, um, defend the country, run the NHS? Can we really trust these people? Well, let's follow the trail through because here is a very powerful man in British government, Ken Clark, and he said very, very uh, forcefully that political leaders take too much notice of media noise. Uh, he says another non-issue in his mind is the revived interest in documents that the Maverick Tory MP Geoffrey Dickens passed to the Home Office 30 years ago, documents which allegedly named paedophiles in high places. And Ken Clark said, I remember these allegations, uh, paedophile ring allegations being reported, but it fizzled out in two days Firstly, because it was Jeffrey and nobody took him remotely seriously. And secondly, because he had no evidence to support any of it. It wasn't a dossier. It was a few letters. Well, that's what Mr. Clark has said. Uh, but let's carry on through because no inquiry into child abuse. And uh, here she is, Fiona Wolfe, uh, pulled out to lead the inquiry, but no more. But of course, what was the public told? Trust this lady. She's not really a member of the establishment. She's independent, except she just happens to be a member of the establishment. And she happens to be closely connected, not only with the political establishment, but as we see here, David Cameron. Could it get worse? Well, it does, because here we are. The headline uh, that has been hitting the press worldwide, Prince Andrew's guards turned a blind eye, yard officers watched as Duke partied with young girls, says Epstein's butler. So once again, the lie from the system is nobody knew, and yet the evidence is in front of us. It is pouring out to say that we have uh, people who cannot be trusted both in political world and uh, within the establishment and indeed the royal family. Well, what has Prince Charles been up to? Uh, what we're not seeing is a forceful lead from Prince Charles for an independent inquiry into child abuse, including the paedophile activities of Jimmy Savile. It's taken the Belfast Telegraph to report that uh, what Prince Charles has been up to um, is having a war uh, with a scientist who was forced out of his job uh, at Exeter, University of Exeter. And in his new book, Professor Edzard Ernst has talked candidly about the loss of his post at the University of Exeter and the role royal influence played in it. And what the article identifies is this gentleman, Sir Michael Peat, uh, was involved. And these are some previous headlines uh, saying that this man retired from royal service and was taken straight into the employment of Roman Abramovich. And uh, Sir Michael Peach was effectively boasting that he was going to go in business and earn big money. Uh, well, that's what he did. And uh, it took the Telegraph to talk about this man's um, investment plans, uh, which included pals in the Virgin Islands who were prepared to put in huge amounts of money 
to his stockbroking company, which was going to be run by his son. And of course, this is the man who controlled the royal purse. Meanwhile, 300 people recently attended one of the Westminster committee rooms where there were MPs and child abuse victims demanding a full and proper independent inquiry into child abuse. Strangely, no reports in the mainstream media. No reports in the mainstream media, despite the fact that uh, at least five mainstream journalists were present. Uh, well, it was also not reported by Xaro, and uh, we've been talking about Xaro tweets. Of course, this is the organisation that boasts it's taking the lead on exposing child abuse. Uh, but we've also pointed out uh, that journalists in Xaro, David Henke, writing very detailed stories uh, on the subject of child abuse um, and including Ben Fellows, uh, but then also tweeting out what the public and the media can and can't do. So here is Xaro telling the public that basically um, you need to be really careful in what you say about Ben Fellows. Uh, is this independent media or is this something very close to the establishment? UK Column is not sure. The theme is clearly that nobody knew. Despite GCHQ, despite special branch, despite royal protection officers, uh, despite all of Britain's police and the Met Police and our government and our establishment, nobody knew, of course, that Jimmy Savile had been running a vicious and uh, widespread child abuse ring. And here are the, some of the people that didn't know, the Queen, Prince Charles, Princess Diana, Margaret Thatcher, the BBC, Gordon Brown, Tony Blair, Stoke Mandeville Hospital, MI5, the police, the Knesset, and indeed Broadmoor Hospital. Nobody knew. And um, if we come on to the latest news, here it is, we've just covered it. Uh, that despite the security forces producing a report talking about abuse, uh, nobody knew. And what does David Cameron think we should do about abuse? Uh, well, he's clearly said, mm, let's just dismiss it. There's no evidence to support the fact that we've had paedophiles in, Britain, in Britain's uh, establishment. And uh, we may lose a little bit of this, but basically nobody knew. Nobody knew at all. So in the last few minutes of the programme, uh, let's just have a look at how our politicians function. And of course, well, here we are. Um, William Hague, who had been telling the cabinet, don't mention the Iraq war. It's a bit embarrassing, really. And surprise, surprise, as we've just shown, the Chilcot inquiry um, has uh, now been delayed yet again because the public simply don't really need to know. Well, we can't resist uh, putting David Cameron in his rather sweet outfit. Here he is, looking very relaxed. A uh, little bit effeminate, in my opinion, but that's just a personal opinion. And uh, he was saying that he'd had a full briefing from the security chiefs, and the UK is facing the same threat from fanatical death cult of Islamic, sorry, Islam Islamist extremist violence. And we say, well, did security chiefs also brief Cameron on child abuse in Westminster and the establishment. Indeed, did our security services say how to cover it up? If you are sitting and thinking, nobody ever warned us this was going on, nobody warned us this sort of thing could happen in a so-called democratic Britain, then let's remind ourselves of what uh, Tony Blair freely said in 2000, uh, as quoted by the Centre for Policy Studies. And he said, he had a vision of a new Britain. Central to this vision is the creation of a new class, a new elite placed in positions of power, uh, sorry, positions of authority who will propagate the new spirit of the age and spread the principles of the third way across Britain. Well, what he was really talking about was the rise of a new class who would simply be appointed and indeed would be above the law. On that note, we will end today's news. Can the situation in Britain be any more desperate than it is that we have uh, a Lib Lab Con in post in Westminster prepared to lie and deceive the British public, not only to create wars overseas, resulting in the deaths of hundreds of thousands 
or millions of people, but we have a Lib Lab Con in Westminster, which is also prepared to lie and cover up the massive sexual and physical abuse of children in Britain. Against that background, we can make no mistakes why we are seeing the uh, country descend into chaos. We have allowed ourselves to be ruled by a criminal elite. And until those people are removed by the democratic process, uh, we are going to be in a very precarious position. And remember, if you think that GCHQ uh, was created to protect us, that is the very organisation that is now being used to spy on people who are exposing the criminals in the establishment and Westminster. Uh, if I'm speaking to anybody directly inside GCHQ at the moment, I hope that the thousands of desk officers are feeling proud that they are working to protect paedophiles who are clearly at work at the heart of our political uh, establishment. That's the news today. Tomorrow we'll be back at the same time and I'm delighted to say that Louise Collins will be joining me. Join us then. Thank you very much. Bye bye.